Indeed, this new moon in Scorpio may sting just a tad, but there's also a grand water trine going on, so plenty of healing balm available for us as well. So let's get into our new moon chart for November 1st, 2024. So this is a new moon in Scorpio. It's happening at nine degrees, Scorpio, 35 minutes. This is our second Mars flavored lunation in a row. We are coming off of an Aries ruled um, full moon, full moon in Aries. And in these two weeks since, I mean, that, that full moon chart was pretty gnarly. And I have been seeing it. I've been seeing it on the world stage. I've been seeing it in people's lives being the first lunation after eclipses. Many people reported feeling like, oh, this was a release of intense emotion. This was a release of rage. I figured out how to move certain energies. I'd been feeling things that had been building up. So on a personal level, it seems to be kind of a productive energy for people. Again, Mars ruling both of these lunations in this opposition with Pluto. This is an aspect that can move mountains. There's a tremendous amount of will here. There's there's a tremendous amount of just catonic life force in this configuration. So for some people, it's showing up as, as sublime rage. For some people, it's just personal accumulation of frustrations. We're all experiencing this a little differently, but... On the world stage, it's been tense. We can just say that much for our intents and purposes here. Um, I know many of us are not living in in um, solitude and we're exposed to it. We're seeing it all the time. So I don't need to go into it here. However, we are going to see a continuation of this energy in this new moon chart. So these charts cover the following two weeks. So we're going to be working with this energy for the next two weeks. This, of course casts a shadow over the U.S. presidential election. So keep that in mind. There are some things about this chart that are intensifying the Mars-Pluto signature, and there are some things in this chart which are going to make it more flowing and easier to, to manage than, let's say, the Aries full moon chart that, that we are just coming off of. So first things first. Mars is now in a tight opposition with Pluto. Mars is ruling this new moon. So a lot of the flavor of this Scorpio lunation, Scorpio being again, like catonic, Scorpio being depth, passion, intensity. Scorpio is all or nothing. We're not feeling in the middle about something. We're feeling all the way to one side or the other. This is a time when passions are going to be heightened and ruled by Mars and Cancer. Cancer being a protective sign, a sign that wants to hold on to something. Um, Mars here, 29 degrees, going to do anything it takes to retain or hold on, protect or preserve whatever it is that you're feeling passionate about, whatever it is that you're feeling intensely about. Um, the only trouble here with Mars and cancer is that Mars has fallen in cancer. And so it's difficult for Mars, um, to be strategic. On one hand, Mars isn't as hot headed in cancer, which is great. That kind of helps Mars out a little bit, but because it's in a water sign, especially one ruled by the moon, there's something about, um, our humanity, our tendency to be reactive and flooded with emotions where we are no longer in control of, um, our timing or the choices that we make. There's something instinctive about Mars and Cancer, which can not always be to our advantage. You know, it is it is the instinctive, protective nature to um, react when someone that you care about is in danger, for example. But it could also be a, a tendency to react in the moment when, for example, strategy could be more of an ally for us. So that's something to keep in mind with Mars and Cancer. We're going to be working with this energy for a long time. I did a longer deep dive into this transit. If you want to find that video, Mars and Cancer. Where we also go into the retrograde. Mars is going to be retrograde in Cancer. We're going to see three oppositions with Pluto here at this new moon. The second one coming on January 6th interesting. <laughs> and 
And the third one is going to be at the end of April, somewhere around April 25th. So this is the beginning of a story that we are going to be working with for a long time. We're going to see this story arc play out for us personally, as well as collectively. So pay attention to what's coming up for you right now, especially if the sign of cancer is somewhere really important in your chart or this degree or the first few degrees of Leo or Aquarius are also prominent in your chart. That means this story is gonna be hitting you in a more personal way. If you do not have planets around those degrees, maybe you won't feel this one as much, but maybe you will. I mean, everyone's gonna feel Mars retrograde somehow. Those are always very important transits because they're rare. So pay attention to where you have Cancer and Leo. More on that momentarily, but let's talk about this opposition with Pluto because this is catonic energy, Mars opposite Pluto. This can move mountains and um, we're seeing that show up for us personally as we move difficult energies in our lives, as we get clarity on the things that are wearing on us. Um. On the world stage, this is going to be something to watch. And this is the piece of the lunation that's going to make this next two weeks a little bit more challenging for us. Because at 29 degrees, there's something, it's, it's, it's the anoretic degree. It's the, it's the crisis degree. There's something we feel we need to protect at all costs. We're willing to do anything, kicking, screaming to protect and defend that. And again, like I said, the tendency to be irrational about it might be a little bit more um, influential just because of the urgency corresponding with this degree. We typically see these signatures show up in a more pronounced or exaggerated way at this degree. So Mars opposite Pluto would be a Plutonian influence here. So Pluto can be authoritarian. Pluto can be very dominating, um, a refusal to see things in another way. It, it adds an intensity here. Um, Pluto can be really demanding, really narrow focused. So there's something really powerfully gripping about this combination. And when Mars and Pluto team up, on the world stage, we see it as tremendous volatility. Again, this is like force of nature alignment here. And in our own lives, it could be really, it could be really an asset for us. It could help us find ways to find tremendous breakthroughs or outlets or releases for things that we've been feeling and keeping under wraps for a long time. It could be a tremendous release of emotion or intention. But on the world stage, we're going to see it show up as volatility. We're going to see it as retaliatory acts. We're going to see it as um, tremendous acts of, let's say, violence, because Mars, Pluto can be violence and volatility. And also going at tremendous lengths to protect, defend, or retain something. So this was part of my prediction. I've been talking about this lunation all year, actually, in my presidential forecast, because I see this as um, a refusal to certify, a refusal to accept results. And I know that a lot of people are kind of arriving at that consensus now, but this is something that astrologers, myself included, have been looking at all year, and this is why. This lunation covers the next two weeks. So this is the very signature that is informing me that, yeah, there's going to be a refusal to concede, a refusal to let go, a refusal to go with the flow. Right after this, Mars is going to move into Leo. We're going to talk about that in a separate video. But let's talk about the nice things that I'm seeing in this lunation chart. Um, one, we've got a grand trine in water. So this ruler, Mars, is in a grand trine with Mercury and Neptune. So I feel that this is a, okay, so like water, grand trine, there's going to be a lot of emotions, a lot of feelings. Water can also be really um, powerful psychic energy, just kind of feeling the energy in the air, 
feeling the place of like the world, feeling other people, tapping into other people interpersonally. Grand water trends are really amazing for um, interpersonal connections, relating with one another, relationships. It's like the merging that takes place, the unspoken way of connecting with one another. And Mars, Neptune with Mercury, that's that feels very collaborative. It feels very like, let's envision something. Let's take action on something that we're envisioning. There's something energizing with Mars there. And Mercury, Neptune is um, like creating the fantasy, basically. And Mars, Neptune saying, let's move toward that. Let's act upon that. There's things that we can do to make this dream happen. So maybe that you're envisioning, planning, desiring something interpersonally, that's where that transit can really show up as a benefit to you. We also have this lovely Jupiter connection. So the <laughs> um, Venus opposite Jupiter that's coming in, that's going to be juicy. We'll talk more about that in a moment. Um, but we also have this trine from the new moon with Saturn. <laughs> That could be solidifying, that could be clarifying, like, okay, now we have answers, we see how things are gonna go, okay? So there's something supportive from Saturn there. So my hope for us on a personal level is that if stuff's been coming up for you, if you've been looking for ways to manage difficult emotions, difficult energies, this is a lunation that can be really supportive for moving some of that gaining awareness on it. And that grand trine saying, yeah, let's let's move from A to B. Let's move in that direction. A sense of possibility there. Um, I am taking a poll on my Instagram right now around what your favorite self-enrichment books are, what your favorite um, self-help books are. I feel like we all need to replenish our library at this time under this Mars retrograde opposite Pluto that we're gonna see three times. So. That's a little bit about this new moon and I hope it serves you in the highest and I hope that you find ways to feel supported through your loved ones during this time um, because as I said, I think on the world stage it's going to be kind of intense. So I hope that you take care during this time and that was your astrology shot of the day and I'll catch you next time. Bye. Thanks so much for tuning in with me today. For more astrology in your world, you can connect with me on all platforms at Astro Catherine. You can also head on over to my website, katherineurban.com, where you can book your next astrology reading. We'll go into depth into your natal chart, your progressions, your perfections, your solar return, your transits, and beyond. You can also join my mailing list where you can stay up to date with me on new classes as well as article drops. I look forward to connecting with you, and I'll see you next time.